First, though, we have Dean Armstrong KC on the line, barrister at Maitland Chambers, who is representing our fires accusers and was at that press conference yesterday. Good morning to you, Dean. Good morning. <sighs> Where do we start on on this? Where do we start? Uh, because <clears throat> well, I'm not. I, I I'm not quite sure that I'm as persuaded, Matthew, as you are or, or appear to be that um, Harrods are doing everything they can. I'm I'm really not persuaded by that. Okay. Um, uh, you, I was on the documentary, as you know. I also appeared at a press conference yesterday with Gloria Allred and uh, a number of my colleagues. Um, and I was fairly plain in my view, which uh, is still my view, that um, Harrods, to suggest that they only... Uh, I think they said after new information in 2023, which I find very difficult to accept because the information was out there. I heard your piece just earlier. Yes. and. Uh, the information was out there for years and years. And it, for me, the most significant feature about that is that Harrods was bought in 2010 as a going concern. And it was, um, it, the, there had been a prosecution which wasn't proceeded with in 2009. So about a year um, between the failed prosecution or the prosecution which wasn't proceeded with um, for reasons, obviously, which I, I'm not privy to. Um, then a year later, a, a £1.5 billion deal goes through. Um, and is it then being suggested that nothing was said about that then? I've, I have extensive experience in various areas of law, including mergers and acquisitions. And I can assure you when you buy and sell <laughs> companies... Um, you don't just do it on the back of a postage stamp. So I- I'm, I- I'm, I'm afraid I'm ne- not persuaded by that um, statement from Harrods. I'm not also persuaded by the fact that Harrods effectively here setting up a claims line for themselves are marking their own homework to a degree. I just don't think that um, that, that, that the independent process that these women are fully deserving of is likely to be even even looks to feel right if it's actually the body corporate themselves who are um, in charge of that. And I'm not saying that because I'm representing um, lots of women in this case. I'm I'm simply not saying that that this 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 uh, hiding in plain sight is a is a is is frankly a scandal. That's that's and- that's the bit that I'm I really want to address because. You can only do it if you're enabled, aren't you? You, you can't do it yeah. on your own. And he yeah. was enabled. Yes, exactly. And and that was the point that I was making yesterday, which is there was a system in place here, uh, even to the point of the of the look and the age of the women that were being selected. Uh, I spoke to a couple of, of of our survivors after the press conference yesterday, and they said... When they were first employed by him, two young blonde women of 19, 20, 20 odd, um, they sat around for the bulk of the day having nothing to do because there was no job. And so effectively what happened was they were selected on the basis of their looks. And then I think this for me is the is the biggest issue and the biggest indicator that there's that there was that this was an orchestrated plan by him, enabled and facilitated by others. But there was the intrusive medical examination Absolutely. for women who were personal assistants, who were um, interior designers. And one of the other survivors yesterday came out with, or said this, I thought, remarkably um, uh, Ill- alarming and an illuminating quote, which was, I was tested for rape. To see whether you were clean was, to be raped. Exactly right. I was being tested to be set up for rape. And that, for me, is the second aspect of this terrible, terrible scandal. And then, of course, there was the isolation. He, his modus operandi was to isolate women. They, they weren't allowed to have friends in the office um, he was always the person that, that they wanted to go to. They would go for a cup of coffee, and if they were out of the office for a bit longer than they should be, a member of the security guard would come along and see where they were. And then the acts would take place in his private quarters or across the world, and then there would be the cover-up. So 
Um, the reason that we are pursuing this claim on the basis of the failure of corporate responsibility is for that precise reason. The body corporate was rotten to the core and was facilitating and enabling his despicable acts. How many victims do you think may be out there of our fired? Um, well, we, as I say, we're already signed up with 37 Um Obviously, yesterday was a busy day. Um, we have overnight certainly in excess of 150 more who've contacted us. Um, we're anticipating that uh, it will be more than that. The power and the money aspect of it, it's, it's, it's becoming a sort of, they're familiar tropes when we talk about the sort of sexual abuse of underlings, because I'm thinking about somebody like Michael Jackson. It, it, it was young boys that he he was predilected towards. Do we are, are there, do, do we need to start looking at checks and balances or some some sort of system? Because it's, it's, I mean, I've, I, it, it, even though I'm not surprised, the scale of, of what was going on and 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 the processes, I mean, that were are beyond the pale, and I, it just seems that we need checks and balances in to stop this because you, uh, you, uh, we have a very powerful boss who intimidates all his lieutenants and uh, and his captains so they all do his bidding and, and you have a totally corrupt institution. Yes, and I think that I think the one of the things that, that I hope and believe must must be taken away from this is the importance in the future of the corporate responsibility of looking after your employees, making sure they have a safe system of work. And the fact that it was the facilities and resources of the body corporate that were being used to um, effectively enable this behaviour, that is something which must be addressed <laughs> very urgently as far as I'm concerned. And it is a, it was a very, we, we were very privileged to have Gloria Allred with, this, with us yesterday. And she made the point that one of the duties of the corporate has to be the ability of it to look after its employees, particularly vulnerable women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for giving up your time. Really appreciate it. What about the press? that famously failed to hold other sexual predators to account, everyone from Jimmy Savile to Jeffrey Epstein to Harvey Weinstein. Well, I would say that Fired groomed the press. Yeah, I know for a fact, because I witnessed them, that he had regular calls with many newspaper editors. One I know of exchanged share tips with him. Aware, Alfa was aware that I knew his son Dodie, who of course died with Princess Diana back in 97. And I think it was because of my friendship with Dodie that I was one day summoned to Harrods to meet the boss. And if my experience is anything like what some of the women may have gone through, well, I'll, I'll tell the story. So a luxury limo was sent to collect me from home. Yeah. Um, you were painfully, painfully aware of the wealth and power that surrounded you. I was escorted into his private office by a sort of raft of security people. And, of course, the private offices where heaven knows how many of these sexual assaults took place. And I, I was invited in for a little chat. And the chat went broadly along the lines of, um, hello, Matthew, you can call me Papa. Um, uh, how is your wife? Do you satisfy her? Have you had Viagra? And I said, uh, oh, my wife's fine. Um, you'd have to ask her if I satisfy her. And no, no, I haven't had any Viagra. Do you want Viagra? I said, well, no, 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 no. Here, here. Take the Viagra. And with that, he reached under his desk, pulled out a drawer, and in it was a, it was a sort of pill box, porcelain pill box, which he handed to me and said, uh, you open it when you get home with your wife. And we spoke a little about Dodie, and then I was sent on my way. And when I did open the box, it contained nothing more than harmless peppermints. Um, and it wasn't something I, I mentioned from the wife, but he did have the press on side. And as I mentioned earlier before the break, it's interesting, isn't it, that he used his celebrity connections to ramp up his own celebrity in this country and the most frequent celebrity guest to his Harrods store was Michael Jackson uh, <laughs> who preyed on children <laughs> it's uh, the failings of the fourth estate of newspapers to hold Al Fayed to account trouble me deeply because I have to say I am absolutely unsurprised by any of the statements that have been made against Al Fayed uh, yesterday not at all and I, I'm it shames me to say that. Um, I worked at Harrods from 1996 to 1997. Okay. And after I'd been there six months, I worked on fifth floor in fitness. My colleague and I were, were at lunch and we got chatting. And he told me 
what he'd heard that he, Mohammed Fayed, um, got his staff, I don't know whether they were security staff or his, his close um, employees, to go down to the, the shop floor and look for young girls. They had to be young and they had to be blonde. This is exactly, I saw in the Bible, this is exactly what he told me. And I and to take them up to the office, they would be then offered a job. Yeah. And we assumed. I said to him first of all to say this. I said that's a big thing to say. Are you sure it's true? I didn't quite believe it, but then a couple of weeks later, I heard the same thing from someone else who didn't know him, and then about a month later after that, I heard. I heard it again from a third person who didn't know him either. So at that point, I thought to myself, it's got to be true. And so I went back to him and I said, it, it looks like it's true. And he said, it is true. He said, because everyone knows about it. I said, how do you know? He said, I just know. I've been told. I can't mention any names. But his security guards know. And all the managers know throughout the store. And also the people that worked closest to him, they all knew what was going on. Now, in the back of my mind, because I'm a suspicious person, I thought to myself, yeah, it looks like he's just manipulating young women, preying on young women, controlling just, them. Just manipulating and preying no. on young women. I mean, it's... Yeah. You know, no, no, uh, no. I, no, I don't want to... I, I, I misused that word then. I don't want... Just hear me out. I thought... It looks like he's doing that, but I bet it's a lot worse. In the back of my mind, I thought that, but obviously you have to be careful what you Of course, you of course. It's rumour yeah. is what we're talking about, and rumour yeah. can be, you know, really pernicious. Yeah. So, yes, absolutely but, but honestly, cautious. Matthew, honestly, I didn't know that it was, you know, that it was full sexual rape and, and, and you know, sexual assault. Um, if I had known, honestly, I think I would have gone to the police. Did you feel safe working there, Sharon? Well, there was one particular incident. Okay, I'll give you two incidents. Harris was not a nice place to work. They treat their, their staff like slaves. And some of the overtime that we did, we never got, even got paid for it. That was one thing. But there was one particular incident, and it was after this incident that I decided to definitely look for another job. I was talking to my manager. We were talking about something in the department. And one of the directors came down to the shop floor, and he wanted to speak to my manager. So obviously I said to Sykes because I knew who he was. And so I was standing next to him, and throughout the conversation, he placed his hand on my hips. So on my way to that would have been bad enough. So I just pulled away and, and walked away, and I thought to myself, because of what my, my colleague had told yeah, me, I yeah. think you're, not, you're not starting this with me. You know, if you think that you're going to do that to me, I, I'm not... You know, I'm not interested in working for you, you know, in it or anything else. And I thought, I don't care if I get sacked. But it wasn't mentioned after that. And my manager was really shocked. And did, did you stick around at Harrods or was, was that... No, was... after that, I looked for another job. But I just want to tell you one thing. Oh, sorry, can I, just, can I just ask... Right. So, do you feel that, uh, that you were essentially driven out of a job because of... I, I want to really. The, the, right, OK. And the other yeah, thing you I, mentioned is calling the police, which uh, I don't blame you, but you were a relatively yeah. um, low-level employee compared to many yeah. others there. So well, what, what is your... What, people, what apparently, you, he would take people from the shop floor and he would look for the young ones and they had yeah. to be blonde. Yes. And, and can I just say one thing? Yeah, of another course. thing that was really weird that I thought was highly suspicious, and, and this was uh, Harris practice. It, ju it didn't just happen to me. But I thought it was very suspicious. I decided to leave, so I gave him my notice, as you do. And I was working my notice, and my, my manager just came up to me out of the blue. He was a lovely man. And I could tell he felt very, very uncomfortable saying this to me. He said, Sharon, I've just had a call from personnel, and your contract's been paid up. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, your contract's paid up. In other words, leave now, and you'll still get paid. And I, I said to him, well, actually, I don't want to leave because I've got a leave and do planned and mm -hmm, I just like to work mm -hmm. for the old, et cetera, et cetera. And I knew he felt really uncomfortable saying it to me. He didn't even make eye contact. He said, no, you have to leave. So I had to go into the cloakroom, get my stuff and actually leave because I was told that I had to and I obviously didn't want to make any waves. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I suspect... I, I that was very suspicious. 
I suspect we're going to hear... Um, well, Private Eye magazine has been running stories about Al Fayed paying off victims for years, decades. So it seems entirely feasible that there are many women out there that may have a story to tell but have also been paid off. And uh, again, that, that dynamic of power, wealth being used to silence or intimidate uh, the less powerful. I, 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 thank you for picking up the phone and calling in on this. It's so important that people hear you know, your lived experience and, t and testimony. It really is. I thank you so much for that, Sharon.